the overwhelming majority of the early settlers, the pre-Civil War settlers, and for that matter, most of the post-Civil War settlers in the, in the Ozarks in the 19th century, were agricultural. They settled on farms or settled in areas and, and hunted and trapped and, and things like that. And it was only on the eve of the Civil War when the modern world in, in the form of the railroad came to the Ozarks. In the 19th century, the railroad was the ultimate symbol of modernity. If you had the railroad, then you, know, you were connected to the rest of America. That was the great, the great vein of transportation, and that was uh, what, in many ways, fueled the economy in the 19th century, was rail, rail, the railroad and railroad building. And it's only on the eve of the Civil War that the railroad comes to the Ozarks. It comes down from St. Louis into the northeastern part of the Ozarks, St. Louis certainly being the, the biggest city, uh, the, the one metropolitan area that Missouri had at the time, and it's much of Missouri's source of wealth and prosperity and modernization, all that kind of stuff. So the railroad comes down to St. Louis and Iron Mountain, reaches the town of Pilot Knob in 1858, and it goes no farther south until after the Civil War. Certainly the war interrupts all kinds of things, including the building of railroads. But it comes down to Pilot Knob, and as a result of that, Pilot Knob becomes an important place during the Civil War. Uh, lots of armies want to hang out around Pilot Knob because they, they have access to the, to the railroad, and there are skirmishes there, and... Uh, lots of action going on, lots of troops in and out of Pilot Knob. And uh, a separate line comes all the way down to Rolla on the eve of the Civil War. And that's the same railroad line that will eventually make its way after the war down here to Springfield. And uh, so you got, at the, when the Civil War starts in 1861, you've got two railroad lines coming into the northern part of the Ozarks just starting to introduce the region to this, uh, to this modern contraption, the railroad, starting to link the region with the rest of the, the country. Now, that's not to say that other places in the Ozarks, that the, the vast number of places that had no connection to the railroad in 1861 were completely cut off from the rest of the country and were backward and were... Uh, were pre-modern or anything like that. Uh, we'll get into, into that a little bit later. Uh, it just means that the most modern of these changes of the 19th century had only reached uh, a very limited number of people in the Ozarks uh, by 1861. And as was the case with railroads across the country, railroad companies didn't just take off and start building tracks into rural areas. They had to have some reason, some justification for doing so. They had to have something in an area that they thought would make them money by transporting goods out of a region, by transporting stuff back into a region. And usually in the 19th century, their targeted resources were timber and minerals. And the Ozarks had both of those. In the northeastern part of the Ozarks, in the Pilot Knob area, you're talking about uh, the vicinity of, uh, in the immediate Pilot Knob area, you've got iron deposits, and those would be developed later in the 19th century. Uh, that area is also in the vicinity of the Great Lead Belt, and the railroad actually comes through part of the, the lead belt up there. So you've got lead, iron, that the railroads are interested in, in shipping out, making money, transporting it. After the Civil War, these railroads will penetrate into the great pine forests of southeast Missouri and will make a lot of money transporting timber and finished lumber. And that's what also was leading them down into southwest Missouri 
as well. Eventually, uh, in, the, uh, in the years before the Civil War, as we'll see in the minute, mining had started to develop in far southwest Missouri in a little place called Granby. And uh, the railroads were eventually heading that direction to try to get down to those uh, zinc and, and iron mines that were down in the Granby area and, and for lead mining as well. But this is what attracted railroad companies. As I mentioned, the, the Civil War, the four years of war, disrupts all railroad building, most building of any kind that didn't have to do with a war effort. But soon after the war ends in 1865, things eventually get to rolling again. The railroad companies start building again. And in 1870, uh, the renamed Atlantic and Pacific Railroad, uh, which would a few years later be renamed uh, the St. Louis and, and San Francisco Railroad, it's popularly known as the Frisco Railroad, would make its way to Springfield and then would build on past Springfield down to Pierce City, eventually building down to Neosho and then on into Oklahoma. It was meant to be uh, a railroad that would stretch to the Pacific, thus the name, Atlantic and Pacific. And uh, this railroad, for the most part, the, the railroad is still there, and it's the one that pretty much follows Highway 60. If you head west of Springfield out Highway 60, a lot of the times there's a railroad right there next to the highway. Sometimes they're not in the same path, but for much of the way, they're in the same path, and that's basically the trail uh, that becomes Highway 60. And this is what... Uh, helps turn Springfield into a railroad town. On the other side of the Ozarks, at the same time, the Iron Mountain Railroad starts building south from Pilot Knob down into the, into the pine forests to exploit this, these huge uh, stands of virgin pine, some of the great virgin pine forests of the, the late 1800s in the United States. Uh, it builds all the way down to Poplar Bluff and, and all kinds of little uh, branch lines are built off of this railroad into the forests. And railroads build towns wherever they go. As the railroad spreads out, at least every five miles a new town pops up. Uh, with a depot and, and any sort of amenities uh, that, that traveling people need and also that local people need. Towns pop up along these, whether it's Highway 60 out that way or what's now uh, I-44, that pretty much follows the, the line of the railroad that came down from Rolla to Springfield. US 60 out east of Springfield, you know, all these places, it's not that they necessarily always built the highways and the railroads together, but these were old trails, they were well-traveled roads that were not only good for railroad building, but they were later good for highway building. And that's why you often get the situation in the Ozarks where highways and railroads are together. They, they travel those old well-traveled roads and, and paths that were here before railroads 